you're scared. You've always been scared, as long as I've known you. You've spent your whole life being an asshole just to keep people from finding out. You think I don't know? Why you keep mouthing off to the wrong people? Why you sabotaged your own career every step of the way? Why you can't help but face off against anybody who has any power over you? You're so scared of being seen as a coward, you'd jump off a cliff just to prove you weren't. Your whole damn life has been one unending act of overcompensation. And you know something, love? It's just as well, because people need to stand up now and then. The video that I'm about to play for you was recorded about a month ago, maybe a few weeks ago, when I was at, I'd say the nadir of my self-confidence as a person who remains alive. A lot of dead ends I'm seeing in my career, in uh, the way that I've set myself up as a creator, the way that I've chosen my profession or not chosen it. A lot of dead ends, a lot of no way outs. Um, I wanted control. I want control. I want to feel like I'm in control. So this video is about my relationship and possibly other creators' relationships with music technology brands and the way that I feel as if we are being sort of taken advantage of. Um, I stand by everything in this video, though I have workshopped it a bit and I'm going to be interjecting and editing some stuff as we go through. Also, I want to apologize for just how smarmy I am in this video. This is what happens when you're like, terrified of yourself and where you are and you have like zero confidence in yourself and you're trying to overcompensate so uh that's what's going on there oh and hey mitch if you're watching this isn't about what you and i went through i filmed this video before that um this isn't directed at you this wasn't because of what happened there so don't sweat no hard feelings with that whole thing anyways this is future jeremy off for right now i'm going to be watching the video here with you in the rain on my ipad and uh, we'll just see how it goes okay See you in a bit. Hello there. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording. And this video is specifically from music technology brands. If you're not a music technology brand, please log off right now. Close YouTube. Go outside. Touch some grass. We're done with you. It's just for music technology brands. I wanted to make this video for a little bit now. Um, and what I want to do is just talk to you, parasocially, <laughs> as a brand, about um, the state of music technology YouTube and your relationship with it and people like me. Because I've made some personal decisions about how I'm going to go forward working with you, and I kind of wanted to explain to you why and uh, explain to you how you can work with us better. I think there's a bit of a, a misconception and issue surrounding people who have decided to make Make music technology content on YouTube and music technology companies who approach them to do videos about their products and or services. What this is really going to come down to is fair compensation for the amount of work that it takes to create a piece of media surrounding your product um, and you understanding that the reach of music technology videos on YouTube that are well produced go much further than like a magazine ad or something like that. So with that said, let's start with talking about what it is that we do. You may have noticed that music technology YouTube, so to speak, if you want to be really gross, synthfluencer YouTube is definitely a thing. Like it's a thing now. It didn't used to be a thing. Uh, it feels like we've got a lot more people doing it. I've had to up my colored lighting game quite a bit to compete with uh, the, the new wave of, of online music technology media creators. I've actually had people approach me in my lessons saying, hey, can you help me start a channel? What's some tips for starting a channel uh, that's like yours? And I've also had people in the same breath say, oh, well, I wanna do it because I want people to send me free shit. And I'm like, I took a deep breath and I was like, well, you know what? That's valid. Shit's fun. Gear is fun. We all know it's fun, right? I like gear. I'm surrounded by it. I don't need gear though. So here's a good place to interject real quick. Um, when I first started getting uh, attention from companies, I was really, really excited. Um, and they were sending me gear and it was really, really cool. I felt like I was being noticed by something bigger than me. It felt like I was actually being acknowledged, like, you know, like my dad told me I did a good job or something like that, you know? Um, but I don't really have any of that gear anymore. Um, it, it didn't do anything for me in the long run. Uh, all I really got was a quick little burst of serotonin from the fact that I was being noticed and getting sent free stuff. So your mileage may vary. I don't want to tell you exactly what to do with yourself. Um, and I'm not talking to music technology brands right now. I'm talking to you, the creators. But just know that like, you know, ultimately 
gear is, is fleeting. Um, uh, it's creativity and time and, and passion that matters more than anything else. And what you guys like to do quite a bit is offer a piece of gear for a video. So let's just take this as, a, as an example. You've just come out with a new drum machine and it costs $500 MSRP. And you wanna send me this $500 MSRP drum machine that probably costs you about $250 or $300 to make. I don't know, I don't know what your margins are, but it definitely didn't cost you $500 to make. You wanna send this to me and you want me to make a video about it, uh, showing it off using my skills as a videographer and as a musician and as someone who can explain things. So you want the $500 drum machine to be uh, what I get paid with to do this for you. I'm gonna get this drum machine and I'm gonna learn it and I'm gonna make a video showing it off and making music with it and then if I don't say anything completely negative about it, that will have other people go and buy this drum machine. So what am I left with? I'm left with the drum machine and I don't need a drum machine. I can't pay my mortgage with a drum machine. I can't feed my dog with a drum machine. Hey again, it's me. You may be thinking to yourself as a creator, hey, but I can sell that drum machine and I can uh, you know, use that money um, to, to sort of get paid. And you totally can, but just keep in mind that um, PayPal like reports that stuff to the IRS. You don't get to just like get free money out of a piece of gear anymore. That That's an asset. And if you sell it and you settle on reverb and PayPal is used for the transaction, then the IRS will know about it. And, um, you know, it's very likely that you will have to pay taxes on that transaction, um, meaning that it will be counted as income. So just keep that in mind. Uh, it's it's not as simple as it might seem on the, on the surface. I don't think that that's a good way of dealing with people who are making you media content to show off your device and ultimately uh, drive sales for your device, right? That's not a good relationship. You are hiring us to do video work for you. If you were to go and hire somebody to do video work to show off your product, what would it cost you? You know, ballpark, what would it cost you? How much would it cost you to go find somebody who has decades of experience working with music technology, making music, putting out albums, and can get a piece of gear and not only like make it sing musically, but also explain it. Do, do, you, do you have a ballpark? Okay. So is it more than a $500 drum machine? It probably is. So as a creator, you need to ask yourself what you think you're worth um, and what your time is worth and what your energy is worth. And ultimately, um, what you want to be doing with your YouTube channel. If you want to just be somebody that shows off the latest piece of gear, then, um, you know, I guess work towards that. Figure out how you're going to do it. Meaning like, are you gonna be someone that demos stuff and makes music with it? Are you gonna be someone that walks through it uh, step by step? Is it going to be sort of a combination of both? Ask yourself what your sort of hourly rate should be for something like that and figure out how long it takes to make a video. Also be aware that um, you probably should shouldn't get paid for reviews. I know it's it's complicated, um, but I've been talking with a few people about this in my, my peer group, and we've come to the decision that getting paid for reviews is problematic. Getting paid for demos is less problematic. It's hard to separate getting paid for something um, and having a bias to say something positive about that. It's a tricky situation to be in, and you really do need to figure out for yourself how you're going to navigate that ethically as a creator and be very upfront with brands and companies, um, music technology brands and companies that come to you with requests to do this. Creators, you really do have the power here. Ultimately, if a music technology brand decides not to work with you because you've stuck by your guns and uh, it didn't seem like a good relationship, that's okay. There's other things that you can do videos on besides new gear. Lots of other things. And I'm coming to believe that they're a little bit more interesting than doing uh, videos on slabs of plastic and metal that go bleep bloop. Just my two cents on that matter. I have spent my whole life learning music, learning video, learning how to construct songs, use music technology, mix master. This is my this is my life. I have put an unmeasurable amount of time and energy, evenings and weekends learning things. You're paying for that. There's a lot of capital and labor that has gone into individuals who are good at things that you make sort of light of, that you disregard if you come at somebody and say, you know, I'll give you a, you know, not for resale license of this piece of software uh, in exchange for a video. It's kind of insulting, honestly. And I finally come to acknowledge the fact that I really need to stop working for free. I really, really believe in small music technology brands. I love them. And a lot of that has to do with modular. Uh, these people who are making a living creating these really interesting little gadgets, you know, like I love them. I, I love them to death. It's a dream. It's a dream come true. It's a 
you know, collection of like craft people in this cottage industry. And I, I really want to support them, but I've been treating them a little too much like family, you know, like, oh, we're a family here and therefore we do work for each other for free. I can't do that anymore. And I, I'm, it makes me sad. I, I want to be able to support uh, these people and that industry as much as I can, but I can't do it for free. So here's my plan going forward. Okay, so uh, in this next part, I kind of went into a little overly specific things about my offerings as a as a professional. I'm not going to put that in here. Um, I just kind of want to say that it's been really, really difficult to uh, turn myself from a sort of artistic individual into someone that can be confident enough about uh, approaching this with a business mind, sort of being objective about rates and value and all that kind of stuff. It, it's hard. And, and I don't know about you creators, but like it's something that you may struggle with too. How do you define your worth in a way that is uh, rather hard to humanize, you know? Like, I don't think this concept of worth and capital is very humanizing. Um, and it's especially dehumanizing when, when you have to field like a whole bunch of different um, ideas about what your worth are. Every single person that comes to you and asks you to do something for them in this field is gonna have a different idea of what you're worth. You need to decide as a creator what you're worth and stick by that. If you make exceptions to what that is um, for special cases, then that's fine, that's up to you. But have a solid understanding of what you are worth and uh, what you offer and how it adds up, what your value is, I guess. Synergy business. The other thing you have to understand is I'm only going to be taking projects on for gear that I think is incredibly special or gear that lets me tell a story. There are two videos that I've already put out this year that are like that. One of them was for the third wave by Groove Synthesis. I got to do a history lesson on the PPG wave. I learned something. It was really fun to research. The other one was for the Glow Reverb um, from Wave Alchemy, which uh, turns out was a, a VST version of the AMS RMX 16 Reverb. And I learned a shit ton by being able to tell a story around that too. I wanna be able to uh, tell stories about um, how music technology came to be, where its place is in the world. And this isn't anything new. This is what Alex Ball does, and he's really, really good at it. it turns out I really like to do that. I don't really care about your product. It's your baby, it's not mine. Someone else will make a video about it because there's people that just wanna do gear videos. Like, they just wanna make videos on gear. They're like, and gadget, but people, you know? Like, it's just, it's how they are. So, that's what I'm gonna do. That's my that's my relationship with you now. That's, that's who Red Beans Recording is. And those are your options when it comes to approaching me for uh, new gear. All right, I'm gonna pause it here. Uh, I went on a big old rant, big old gatekeeping rant about how uh, synthesizers and modules and other music technology stuff is released to the world and how there's a big glut of videos and Reddit gets mad. I don't really give a fuck about what Reddit thinks anymore. Um, <laughs> I don't want to gatekeep how releases work. Um, I can't control uh, that kind of thing. What I will say is that I really don't like to participate in uh, zero days and embargo drop days. Uh, they are one of the most nerve-wracking and frustrating things to do as a creator. Um, it's already bad enough that I feel like I'm losing my voice and losing my, like, what makes me special in this field um, on YouTube as a synthesizer person or a musician or whatever. Um, I'm still looking for what that is now. There's something about embargo drop days or release days that just makes that even worse. It destroys me. It's just another drop in the bucket video. It's like, it's nothing. It's nothing special. Like. I just don't want to do it anymore. If there's somebody out here doing this stuff for free, like the music technology videos, they shouldn't be considered the norm. They have other means of supporting themselves probably, and they have made a choice to do it for free. It's not professional, I don't think. In the same way, it's not professional to give somebody like, you know, exclusivity to a video or they get to put theirs out first. I don't think that that's very professional for you to do with people making content on YouTube. We talk. To each other you realize that right like myself and other music technology uh youtube people we talk about you behind your back we know what you're doing we know what you've offered people we know how this shit works like we're industry people just like you <laughs> it's just you seem to not quite understand that like we know what's up and i don't mean that maliciously i'm just saying that like my choice to to talk with you like this has come in great part from having a support network of other professionals who we've come together and we've talked about what we want and what we think that this should look like because it's clear that you don't really understand what this is, like what this relationship should be. And I get it, it's relatively new, but since it is here to stay, since it is now a thing, 
we might as well set some ground rules. And hopefully this video is helping with that. That's it, I think. Let's do a little quick review. Music, technology, YouTube is a community. And it's a community of professionals. It's a community of professionals who are in the process of sort of lightly unionizing in the way that we talk about the projects that we're doing and how uh, we want to be treated with those projects, the goods, the bad, shit like that. Professionals. What does that mean? Well, we've put work into our craft as musicians, as explainers, as videographers, as editors, as sound designers. Did I mention audio engineers? Yeah, like we are diversely talented people and it's not even tooting my own horn. We just, we are like, that's why we're in this position. You're paying for that. You're paying for expertise. You're paying for, oh, actually you're not, sorry. You will be. Pay people for what they are worth. To those small companies that are part of this community who are, you know, dreaming up these weird little things and, and making that part of their life. Bless you, I love you, I wish you the best, and I always look forward to see what new interesting things you come out with uh, every year. Large companies, I mean, some of you are good, some of you are really bad, like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Like, um, I, I have I have my favorites, and there are people that I like working with from a personal perspective, but also from a, uh, a music technology perspective. I can expect good things from them um, at certain levels of their product lines. And then there are other companies who are kind of just like all over the place. But you know that's capitalism. I understand you're you're trying to play every niche, every angle, whatever you can to survive. Guess what? I'm in a capitalism as well. So you're gonna pay me. You've done such a great job, music technology brands. Thank you. Here, here, pat, pat, pat. Pat on the head. You're so good, so brave. Do you want a lolly? Here you go. Here, here you go. Okay, everyone else can come back in now. Come on. Thank you so much for watching. This has been um, cathartic for both of us, I think. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Like I said in the beginning of this video, the video that you just watched was an attempt to wrestle control from a situation I felt out of control of. Um, I haven't really achieved that, but I still want to start this conversation. I still want this conversation to be out there. I want creators to start thinking about their worth and um, their time and their value. And I want companies who reach out to creators to understand their worth, their value, and treat it with a more professional sort of bent to it. I know the big companies know how to be professional. It's literally their job. Let's all kind of, uh, let's all kind of agree to be a little bit better about this. Anyways, that's it for me. Uh, thank you so much for watching. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Muse Recording, and I hope you have a wonderful day.